In question three, we have to find the LCM and HCF of each of these sets of three integers given to us using prime factorization. So let's start with the first set of integers, which is 12, 15 and 21. So these are small numbers and we can prime factorize them directly without having to build factor trees. So 12 is equal to 2 into 2 into 3. 15 is equal to 3 into 5. And 21 is equal to 3 into 7. Now to find the HCF, the HCF is the product of the smallest power of each prime factor in the given set of numbers. So we see that only 3 is the common prime factor in the, in the 3 integers and 3 occurs once in each of these 3 integers. So the HCF will be 3. To find the LCM, we will take the product of the largest power of each prime factor in the set of numbers. So we see that 2 occurs twice in the first number and does not occur in the other two numbers. So in the LCM it will occur twice. So 2 square, then 3 occurs once in each of the three numbers. So in the LCM it will occur once. Then we have 5 occurring once in the second number. So it will occur once in the LCM and 7 also occurs once in the third number. So in the LCM also it will occur once. So the LCM will be 2 square into 3 into 5 into 7 and this is equal to 420. So the HCF is 3 and the LCM is 420. So that completes part 1. Now let's do part 2. So in part 2, the integers are 17, 23 and 29. Now all of these numbers are primes themselves. So their prime factorizations are the numbers themselves. Now the HCF is the product of the smallest power of each prime factor in this set of numbers. So in the HCF, none of these prime factors will occur because 17 occurs only in the first number, 23 occurs only in the second number and 29 occurs only in the third one. So the HCF of this set of integers is simply equal to 1. Now the LCM will be the product of the largest power of each prime factor in this set of numbers. So for the LCM, we see that 17 occurs once in the first number, does not occur in the other two numbers. So 17 will occur once in the LCM. Similarly, 23 occurs once in the second number only and does not occur in the other two numbers. So 7, 23 will occur once in the LCM. And similarly, 29 occurs once in the third number and does not occur in the other two numbers. So 29 will occur once in the LCM. So the LCM will be 17 times 23 times 29, which is equal to 11,339. So this is the LCM uh, of the second set of integers. So the HCF is one and the LCM is 11,339. So that completes part two. Now let's look at part three. So in part three, the set of integers is eight, nine and 25. Now, once again, these are small numbers and we can prime factorize them directly. So eight is equal to two into two into two. Nine is equal to three into three and 25 is equal to 5 into 5. Now the HCF, for the HCF we see that these three numbers have no prime factor common. So their HCF will be equal to 1 because they have no prime factor common. And for the LCM, we see that 2 occurs thrice in the first number it occurs thrice in the first number, 
does not occur in the other two numbers so in the lcm it will occur thrice 3 occurs twice in the second number but does not occur in the other two numbers so 3 will occur twice in the lcm and similarly 5 occurs twice in the third number but does not occur in the other two numbers so in the lcm also it will occur twice so the lcm is 2 cube into 3 square into 5 square or 8 into 9 into 25 and this is equal to 1800 so for the third set of integers the hcf is 1 and the lcm is 1800 and with that part 3 is completed so this is how you can solve question number 3 to learn more about how QMath can help you crack school and board exams, explore QMath Leap, a live online classroom program run by highly experienced and committed teachers.